Okay, so uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Dr. Amila uh, Diwapar. And uh, she has uh, a lot of experience in batch optimization. Uh, she's done quite a bit with uh, the Center for Uncertain Systems um, and, uh, and, and has a number of optimization tools that uh, she has led the development of or um, been a visionary leader in, in this area for some time. Uh, and, and so today she's going to be talking about um, a new algorithm, uh, better optimization of nonlinear uncertain systems or bonus algorithm. And uh, this is for large scale real world stochastic nonlinear programming problems. And um, so, uh, and, and Ramil, I understand that you also have a book coming out as yeah, well. Yeah, is that correct? yeah. Yes. Actually, uh, whatever I'm talking about, everything is coming out uh, a book by from Springer. And it's, uh, can you hear me, all of you? Yeah. Yeah, we can and, hear you. And it's being nominated for Informs Computing Award. Fantastic. Well, that's great. And uh, so we're certainly lucky to have you here today. And so with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over um, to Ermila. Thank you very much, John, and it's a pleasure. Uh, uh, I really appreciate uh, this opportunity to talk to you. Uh, I am going to talk about uh, the bonus algorithm. I know it's a long title. Uh, if uh, one of the thing is that if you feel I am talking too fast or something is not clear, you can give me message or in the chat or you can tell me. Uh, the uh, uh, one other thing, Ramil, let me just uh, interject there as well. So, okay. th and that's right. Thank you for bringing that up. If you want to ask a question and your microphone is not working. Feel free to uh, put the question into the chat window, and then uh, you know Ramila will see it, and, or I will see it, and uh, we'll try to answer those questions as we go. Uh, so don't feel bad about um, asking a question either through your microphone or uh, through the chat window as we go. Uh, one, thanks, John. Uh, one of the things I, I am going to talk about is concentrating on uncertainties and optimization under uncertainty. Uh, so, and especially uh, because we are engineers and we deal with nonlinear problems, uh, I'm going to deal with that uh, in this talk. So, if we consider nonlinear optimization problems with uncertainty, they are difficult problems because your uncertainties are coming from various sources, so you may not have just one parameter uncertainty. Uh, you can have various distributions for different uh, parametric uncertainty. They could be stable or non-stable distribution. Uh, Sometimes you also have, uh, along with continuous variable, discrete variable. Uh, that becomes a mixed integer problem, and that is a tough problem, as you know. And generally, when we are dealing with engineering problems, they are large-scale uh, problems. So one of the things happened in the traditional uh, stochastic programming problem, people use decomposition technique to solve the problem, like stochastic linear programming problems, but that means that you have to exploit the structure of the problem and that your large scale problems may not be amenable to that. Uh, one of the things in stochastic programming happens is that people have uncertainties and they assume scenarios. But if you look at generalized representation of stochastic programming, uh, uh, here I'm showing the diagram of the stochastic programming optimization, uh, how it works. Uh, generally, it is a iterative process. In general optimization, which is the top loop here, you essentially uh, specify the decision variable, go through the model, and uh, either get the derivatives and check the Kuhn-Tucker error to find whether this 
decision variables you selected are optimum or not and then change the decision variable. In case of stochastic programming the model you will be using is not deterministic model but a stochastic model and essentially what you are doing is you are assigning probability distributions to your uncertain variables and finding the probability distribution of objective function and constraint. Your objective function is some specific form of probability distribution. So for example expected value or variance or some fractile of the distribution. So if you look at uh, these two loops what happens is uh, during optimization you have to run this stochastic modeler again and again and again. Uh, if you are doing scenario optimization you have to run to get a realistic estimate of uncertainty thousands of scenarios need to be run that means samples to be run. So the problem is this continuous sampling uh, in the inner loop is a major bottleneck. So if you look at what that is why uh, in the nonlinear programming problem why we want to improve this is we, we when we are dealing with large scale problems and especially if you are running uh, black box models like in Aspen simulator or uh, you are using some other pro 2 or other simulators and modeling your system you have to use perturbation derivatives. So when you are solving nonlinear programming problem you are essentially not only running the stochastic model for each iteration but also for derivative estimation so perturbing the variable and running. So the major bottleneck is rerunning the sampling again and again. So for example uh, if you consider a traditional optimization problem and I would say on an average uh, for a nonlinear problem if you are converging in 10 to 12 equations for every iteration and for every decision variable you have to run this sample and sample size has to be depending on the uncertain variable but it has to be more than 100 at least you know and depending on the objective function if you are running it for expected values smaller number of samples are okay or like 100 or 150 or 200 but if you are running variance it can be 1000 and that can be a matter bottle. So what we are we have done is we have proposed an algorithm called better optimization of nonlinear uncertain systems. Bonus is the acronym and essentially that uh, addresses this bottleneck of SNLP. So in case of SNLP so what I what is a bonus? The general concept is bonus is it work in output space because you are looking at objective function and constraints which is a function of output uh, it essentially tries to capture the model behavior in the output space uh, and instead of taking as decision variable change you do not rerun the samples again and again through the model but use what we call it as a re-weighting scheme uh, in the probability space. And on the sampling side uh, we have to do some sampling not all but only on the first iteration uh, we use an, a novel sampling called Hammersley sequence sampling which is based on quasi random number and which is considered to be the fastest in case of optimization and the uncertainty that means you can take less number of samples to get the same accuracy okay. Uh, so far uh, what I am talking is it clear? my voice and everything. Yeah that is thing that is clear. Okay so that is the thing so now one of the things uh, when you are dealing with nonlinear problems especially uh, when you are dealing with stochastic problems you are dealing with output distributions okay distribution of your objective function or constraint and in case of nonlinear optimization you want this distribution to be continuous so that you can get derivative of this uh, of the objective function and constraint. So the question basic comes back to is how do you get a continuous distribution 
because when you when you assign probability distributions to inputs and you run it through the model and get the output your distribution is just the data so to get a continuous distribution uh, uh, generally people use parametric distribution so for example normal distribution or in our log normal distribution where you specify mean or variance and actually get the distribution they are called parametric because they depend on uh, the movements like parameters you can assign to however when you have a data you do, you have a nonlinear model you don't know what kind of distribution you are going to get at the out output level and mainly people use non parametric distributions to assign uh, to for the data which you are you don't know uh, a specific kind of distribution like normal log normal uh, the simplest parametric non parametric distribution is histogram okay so essentially what you do is you bin the uh, data and find in each bin how many where uh, values are falling in and then you draw the histogram but histogram is not continuous it's a discontinuous process so it's very difficult to find derivative information if you assign distribution as histogram to your data output data so what we use in bonus is based on what we call it a non parametric estimation method called kernel density a kernel distribution a kernel density is where uh, you assign different functionalities of the distribution at each point so for example in this figure i have shown a gaussian kernel density estimation or distribution in case of gaussian kernel what you do is essentially represent each data point by a gaussian function and essentially then you just like summing up the histogram in each bin you are summing up this function and you can get a continuous function there are different kinds of kernel density functions are as you uh, can be assigned uh, we chose gaussian because that is better in terms of uh, getting a continuous distribution and so your end distribution is not going to be gaussian distribution but uh, a, a combined distribution Uh, adding all the Gaussian distributions at different points, as shown here. Okay, so you will get a continuous distribution which can be of any shape uh, with Gaussian kernel density. So what you're doing in case of stochastic programming problems is that your representation of the output this will be in the form of Gaussian kernel density estimation. Is in in short a continuous distribution. Uh, in your optimization problem what you are actually doing is you have uncertain variables and deterministic variables so i am representing here an objective function so your problem is for example expected value minimization so your objective function will be expected value of for example cost and you have some probabilistic constraint saying that my risk should not be greater than or equal to something uh, some probability value so that those constraints are also probabilistic subject to your decision variables are deterministic and your uncertain there are uncertain variables and there are uncertain parameters so in this diagram i have divided into four quadrant a deterministic decision variable what you are going to find is you are going to find a value of this variable which is optimum between lower bound and upper bound okay it's a single value which will be optimal then there are uncertain variables which is denoted by x here and there are uncertain parameter and deterministic parameter this forms the all the parameters in your uh uh model okay so you have so what happens case in case of bonus is that we are saying that when you are deciding decision variable you are essentially trying to find a single value from between lower bound and upper bound so we are saying that if you assume a uniform distribution between lower bound and upper bound and take uncertain variable as is and sample the surface sampling is something which is generally done optimally with hamster statistics sampling 
you will get some distribution. So this is shown here. So if essentially if I am assigning uniform distributions to my decision variables and whatever distributions are there for your uncertain variable, you can sample them and pass through model and I get an output distribution. Now this distribution again will be derived from the kernel density estimation, okay. How it is represented, how this distribution, so suppose for example I want to find the expected value of the output distribution, I essentially it is a function of uncertainty in my uh, uh, in the probability density function of the uncertain variable and the value of my decision variable. So if I show this graphically uh, in this figure it is a three dimension figure and f is a function which is output function is a function of my uncertain variable and decision variable and my decision variable is uh, has no uh, distribution it is a single value and uncertain variable are distribution. So on the top the distribution normal distribution for uncertain variable is shown. If you plot the decision variable versus uncertain variable at a single point decision variable this red line will be occurring, okay. So if you have samples uh, then your samples have to be falling in this red line, okay. Uh, what we are saying is that uh, to do the calculation probability calculation we would prefer to have a distribution also for the decision variable. Now decision variable is a single line here but if I just modify the line and make it a small distribution okay. So if you look at the top figure uh, can you, so assume your distribution x for your decision variable as a normal distribution with a very small narrow normal distribution around that point. So it is shown in the top as a normal distribution which is narrow normal distribution and in the bottom uh, the samples are shown so there is a small distribution there. So if you have that you can use something in the probability estimation which is called reweighting scheme. Now what is reweighting scheme? Uh, a reweighting scheme is something where if I have given, if, if I have a probability distribution as shown in the top of the left hand side, uh, right hand side figure which is a uniform distribution. If I have a uniform distribution which is a best distribution, I run through the sampling and get the output distribution with the model, I will get some output distribution which is shown on the left hand side at the bottom, okay. But in case I change the input distribution from uniform to a normal distribution, I do not have to run the samples again, I can use a formula which is a reweighting formula between probabilities to get the estimate of the output distribution and this is the important concept in bonus. What we are saying is that initially if we get the base distribution for decision variable and uncertain variables, I do not need to run the model again for any optimization iteration. So what I will do here is that uh, and this is the formula for getting the output expected value. Uh, I won't get into the details of it but if you look at it there is a weighting function w and there is f and f0, f0 is the base case distribution and f1 is the narrow normal distribution and uh, which is for decision variable and actual distribution for uncertain variable and what will happen is f is the probability distribution function which you will know a priori you can calculate the weights and you can calculate the objective function and constraint. Is it clear so far? Yeah, um, I actually just had one yeah. question on this. So yeah. um, you were talking about, you know, how you avoid resampling this unnecessarily and you, yeah. you yeah. mentioned how you're using maybe the Hessian and the yeah. first derivatives yeah. from prior yeah. solutions. Can you? Yeah. Say just a little bit more about okay. that. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 a great thing. So, for example, I will go back to the uh, uh, diagram of optimization under uncertainty. 
what are we doing in a nonlinear optimization is essentially the optimizer is telling me okay choose this decision variable initially i give the value of decision variable then uh, i actually find the probabilistic objective function and constraint and then find whether it's optimum or not based on derivative information and right. then choose the new decision variable now so in this yeah in and this and just one question is how do you determine you know what is is something that's sufficiently close to a prior solution versus um, whether you need to recalculate and re-optimize for those? No, uh, the thing, uh, yeah, that, that's a good question. So what we do here is saying that your uncertain variable has a distribution given by you, okay? So it mm -hmm. could be anything. And your decision variable, I want to find value between minimum and maximum. So initially what I do is I assign a uniform distribution to decision variable between minimum and maximum. I assign whatever uncertain variable distribution and sample the whole surface and get the values of objective function and constraints. Okay. So I have samples of objective function and constraints over all this, uh, all this uh, uh, regions. Then when I am doing optimization, I am choosing one set of decision variables, okay? So if I am choosing one set of decision variable, what I am saying is that the decision variable are a very narrow distribution around that value. Suppose my decision variable is 5, okay? So I can take a very narrow distribution between 5.0001 and 4.9999, okay? Right. <laughs> and essentially, uh, I am instead of running the model again, I am just going to do the calculation in the probabilistic space and find the ob ob objective function, probabilistic objective function in terms of this different probability. So I am not running the model again. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Okay, and the same thing I will do by changing uh, decision variable, perturbing decision variable to get the derivative value. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. how I get the nonlinear programming information. Okay, so Great. thanks for uh, interrupting me and thanks for asking that question. So once this is done, uh, essentially what happens is uh, you are not running the model again, and uh, you will see the results. Actually, I'm going to show some case studies. Now, one of the things I won't get into the details of the case studies because uh, uh, we don't have much time, but as I said, this is all the algorithms as well as the applications is in the form of book. It's going to be available in three, four months from Springer. Uh, so, and if you need more information, papers are available. So you can write to me and I can send you the papers, okay? So that's it. So the case study problem I am going to talk about are three uh, a parameter design problem, uh, which is, uh, uh, a problem where I am looking at a continuous third tank reactor and reactions and looking at a product variation in the product and I am minimizing the variance of the product, okay? And I have a simple model of CSTR and there are six parameters which are uncertain and essentially I am trying to find the value of the optimal value so that I have minimized the variance of the decision variables and I'm going to do this both ways by using bonus and by using traditional uh, sampling as well as traditional uh, nonlinear optimization, stochastic nonlinear optimization technique. And I'll show you the results. The second problem, I won't touch it, it has similar results, is electricity capacity planning problem. Here I want to minimize expected cost and essentially capacity expansion levels for two different plants are decision variable. And so uncertainty is in the production levels for each plant. Uh, somebody is asking question? Okay. And the third problem is uh, water management in power plant, which is where I am going to use a real world case study. And essentially this is a Midwestern power plant. Uh, it's a coal, fired power plant and water uh, is a major problem because uh, they close some of the plants in southern southwestern part of the United States when the 
there were broad conditions and especially in summer a uh, problem was water was not sufficient these plants have been designed as if there are you know water and it's not charged so here uh, the problem was minimization of water consumption uh, keeping the capacity of the plant constant these are the mod it's a large scale model of the power plant uh, which is existing power plant and essentially uh, model in aspen so it's a black box model and we considered weather uncertainty this problem has been solved two ways i won't get into the uh, one is daily optimization hourly optimization real time uh, taking daily weather data and seasonal optimization so i'll present one of them here so the first problem parameter design problem or or also called as offline quality control okay uh it is based an approach based on takuji takuji's approach of quality control essentially six sigma framework uh it boils down to finding designs which are insensitive to changes okay disturbances and essentially what you're saying is that i want to minimize variance of the uh of the objective function and essentially here that is production of a particular uh, reaction uh, product and essentially identify parameter setting that make the products perform less sensitive to this fluctuation essentially more it's also called robust design okay so it's a very simple problem uh, i have a continuous stirred tank reactor the reaction is a going to b going to c b is the important product and this is a small case study as i said it's a simulated example taken from the book uh, so my decision variables are feed concentrations temperature reactor volumes and so on uh, i haven't given and what is said is that some of the controllers some of the sensors have uncertainty so that's why there are uncertain variables six uncertain variables like such as temperature of the jacket and effective volume and some of the fluctuations in the feed and the heat uh, supplied and those kinds of things and the design specification here is 60 moles per minute of product b okay so we want to minimize variance in the quantity of b form so that it doesn't affect the production so this is the next slide which i'm showing here is just the equations essentially you'll see that reaction rate heat uh, um, uh, heat given to the jacket uh, time constant of the reaction and is, uh, of the reaction vessel and essentially production rate for b okay so and there are six parameter uncertainty it's a small scale problem uh, as i said we use both traditional stochastic nonlinear programming and both so here are the results okay so uh, both traditional non linear programming algorithm and bonus gave the same result essentially this is the trend iteration shown here we want the b production to be at 60 and you will see that initially that the red line the variance is much larger which is like 400 a uh, standard day va variance is 405 and after optimality condition the variance is something like 90 so significant reduction in the variance and there are it took five iterations there were six decision variable uh, six uncertain variable and essentially uh, we did it so how is the computational time uh, as compared to traditional stochastic programming this is the performance okay with bonus we needed 150 model runs and with actually traditional snlp 5400 model runs so you can see that order of magnitude reduction in computational time and if you follow the iteration the red lines are traditional red red points are traditional snlp and green points are bonus so far are you people with me So yep. yeah, we're, we're just all on mute. So um, 
Yeah. Just to not have microphone feedback, but we're here too. So okay, thanks. So this is what it shows that it's essentially giving me same solution but some large scale reduction in computational time. Uh, this is okay for small scale problem, but for large scale problem, this may be a problem. Okay, and so the real world application uh, which uh, some of is uh, we have used for bonus is seasonal water management in power plants, real time water management in power plants, sensor placement in IGCC power plants, and then we actually modified bonus algorithm to combine with another stochastic programming algorithm called L-shape for mixed integer nonlinear programming problem. And there are two, two real world examples are there water pollution trading and sensor placement in drinking water. So I'm going to actually talk about two of this application, one from bonus and one from LSAT bonus, okay? So the first application, real world application, water management in PC power plant, okay? Uh, here I'm just showing a schematic of a coal-fired power plant. Don't get into the detail, essentially what you're doing is you have a boiler where pulverized coal is sitting. A boiler is also have uh, the capability of, uh, you have SCR for NOx control, and there are SOx, uh, sorry. And then you have baghouse filter for removing uh, particulate matter. You have FGD, uh, FGD is for sulfur control. So you have essentially FGD is uh, uh, gypsum is added, limestone uh, is added, and some uh, socks is removed. You have turbines, you have uh, high pressure turbines, intermediate pressure turbines, and low pressure turbines. And essentially, you have feed water heater system where most of the cooling of water is required, and uh, essentially, power is generated. If you look at the power, the power is generated, is, this is a Midwestern plant. Okay, and the power generated is something like 580 megawatt range. Okay, so it is a large scale power plant. Uh, this was modeled and fitted for the plant in Aspen. Okay, you don't look at it, it's a really complicated Aspen flow sheet. That's what it's shown here. That's why you cannot make out even the unit operation level. Okay, large scale plant, uh, it takes something like six minutes to run one flow sheet run, okay? And we want to do optimization on the uncertainty because weather is uncertain, okay? So here is a 448 megawatt plant, not 580, 548, I'm sorry. And this plant actually uh, model is taken from uh, NETL, uh, the uh, uh, cost and performance baseline for fossil energy power plant study, volume one. So it is available, it's a Aspen model. Now, one of the things is that raw water usage for this plant is 5441 gallons per minute, and DOE wanted to reduce water by 70% by 2030. So that's why this project was funded. Uh, in order to reduce water, we looked at if this plant has been built something like 40, 50 years ago, then they had no consideration for water, and it was built so that they they must have optimized it for cost, but not for any other purpose. So we wanted to keep the capacity of the plant constant and reduce the water time. Okay, so where are the water actually uh, consumption in the plant? There are three kinds of things happening in the plant. Water intensive process, just for example, FGD is one of them, is water intensive, then steam cycle and cooling water. Many or much of the water is the cooling water, and essentially we want to reduce water throughout the plant, so we have to consider all kinds of uh, uh, water consumption. Now, the thing what we did is we said that let's look at water minimization problem. Water consumption is affected by weather quite a lot, especially two 
two things in the weather one is dry bulb temperature of the weather and humidity uh we collected data from uh, for all different seasons uh, uh there is a website uh, which gives data every 15 minutes for humidity and uh, also dry bulb temperature for a particular uh, uh, city or particular region so for the midwestern plant we collected data uh, for so many years and essentially uh, fitted distribution so you will see that these are different distributions for humidity which we couldn't get continuous distribution for uh, dry bulb temperature we could and they change significantly depending on the season the top is the fall season and uh, so it's it's fall winter um, summer and spring kind of thing so that those are the seasons here sorry uh, so uh, summer is the last one okay so that's the thing and we collected uh, data and fitted this uh, depending on and and then we said okay let's do the optimization problem we actually selected six decision variables and some of them are selected based on water intensive process like fdd and some of them are selected based on thermodynamics so here we are showing temperature enthalpy diagram for turbines and essentially pressure uh this uh, delta p at high pressure and low pressure high pressure turbine one and high pressure turbine two can affect the heat quite a lot and essentially cooling water and the temperature is also affected so this can be considered as one of the decision variable so we have selected six decision variable we actually did a sensitivity analysis of decision variable based on a sampling and uh, what uh, they call it in the uh, in case of uh, stochastic modeling partial rank correlation coefficient and what we found is that uh, these are the six decision variable out of potential decision variable we selected to look at it is that you have to have temperature pressures as well as uh, some of the fdd water content in fdd slurry as one of the variable so we selected those and then we use actually bonus to solve it this is a non convex problem so we had to restart the initial uh, the non linear programming problem many times to get to the solution so this is a different restart values okay and you will see that different iterations are required for different restart values so if you are solving a real world problem and it's a non convex problem obviously you have to re uh, do this again and again that means that many iterations are required and what we found is for the some this is for showing for the summer season we could reduce the water consumption by 12% and bonus actually made it possible for us to solve this problem because the computational time was reduced by 99% 99.7% okay so we could do this in something like 2 hours to solve this problem and get the solution so this is something then we did it for all seasons i am showing here the optimal values of the decision variable for different seasons obviously they change with season uh, in this table you will see that after optimal decision variables you have bonus estimate of the objective function then we did actually rigorous simulation stochastic simulation to find out what exactly is value of objective function at that point uh, and then you also have stochastic simulation of the base case value where the starting point which is the base case what they are using right now and the last is uh, item in the table is the saving and you will see that for fall the saving is 6.4% for summer is 15.4% and then 3.8 and 3.2% from spring and winter so depending on which season you are taking you can change you can get better solutions and remember for summer uh, there is a definite problem in southern southwest part of the us where water can be a constraint this problem can also be caused as water constraint problem where you are minimizing 
you are maximizing the expected power and you can do real time optimization. So we could do this problem because of bonus. Uh, you can see here uh, water consumption actually depends, uh, varies quite a lot with different samples. Uh, we had taken expected value. We could do any other fraction tactile uh, of this distribution as an objective function also, you know, if you want to minimize the risk. So this was one case study uh, from the, which is a large scale real world case study from bonus. Now I switch to another algorithm which is a variant of bonus for mixed integer nonlinear program, uh, which is called L shape bonus. What is L-shape bonus? L-shape algorithm in stochastic programming is used uh, to take exploit the specific structure of stochastic programming problems, first stage decision, second stage decision, third stage decision. And essentially, uh, it's a decomposition structure is exploited to get more efficiency for stochastic programming problem. We essentially combine the bonus versus the stochastic programming L shape structure uh, for the mixed integer nonlinear programming problem, and obviously use the Hamishley sequence sampling uh, to get a, a very efficient uh, code there. So, this L shape bonus, we have some example. The case studies I am going to talk about is chemical blending problem. Essentially, if you have a, a simple blending problem, which is generally a linear problem, but with uncertainty it becomes stochastic uh, nonlinear problem, and essentially what you want to do is minimize blending cost. Uh, decisions are blending strategy of chemicals to manufacture blend products, and uncertainty is impurities in the contents of basic components. The second problem, uh, which is a large scale problem, is actually higher dimensional security problem where uh, uh, this was a problem uh, people were uh, thinking, especially uh, Department of Homeland Security, saying that uh, drinking water networks, of, if they are affected, if some terrorists come in and essentially try to contaminate the drinking water network, then how do you minimize the uh, the risk to the population, okay? So the sensor placement problem was to minimize this due to contamination attack in the water network. And essentially decisions are discrete, saying where should we put the sensors, given that we don't have infinite kind of resources to put sensors because cost can be prohibitive. And there is uncertainty because demands are changing also, attack probability is changing, which I haven't written here. And the other problem is water pollution trading problem, where you want to minimize compliance costs for pollution reduction. Uh, you can trading of multiple pollutants with a non-point source uh, from the point source, and uh, effectiveness of non-point pollution reduction method can be uncertain. So I won't get into the details of, again, uh, the problems. I'm going to give the highlights of the problem. Remember, these problems are mixed integer problems, and I'm new. That's why I'm combining L-chip method. Uh, sorry, a stochastic programming problem where I'm using the structure of the problem also to solve it. So this is the chemical blending results. I'm not getting into detail, as I said is that I'm comparing the traditional L-shape method algorithm versus L-shape bonus algorithm. The black line is CPU time for L-shape algorithm, and the red line is CPU time for L-shape bonus algorithm. As the sample size increase, the L-shape bonus and the and depends on number of uncertain variables, the sample size will change. So it changes, its CPU time actually increases exponentially for the traditional algorithm, while that changes linearly with bonus algorithm, okay? And the difference between the results are not that much. So within 2% of the error, so you can get better results also with l shape bonus. Now, the second problem, uh, the same problem, with different sampling techniques, 
I won't get into the details of it. Essentially, showing that homocysteine sequence sampling is a better sampling, which is already established. Okay. So that's uh, okay. now water pollutant trading. Here we have plotted iteration for L-shaped method versus iteration for L-shaped bonus method. Again, you are seeing that L-shaped bonus method requires less iterations because if the look at y-axis. The iteration ratio starts at 5, not at 1. So, L shape algorithm, which is the basic algorithm of stochastic programming, is actually uh, requires much more iterations to get to the same solution as one L shape bonus algorithm. And it increases exponentially as the sample size increases. So, now I go to the real world problem, which is optimal sensor placement for drinking water network. As I said, this problem was envisioned as, in fact, there is a consortium of uh, water utilities uh, which were demanding that they should have a tool to solve this problem. So the risk is water contamination. So water contamination is aspect of environment and pollution, but drinking water contamination also is, uh, is a problem of security and risk. Okay. Uh, it can be intentional contamination or unintentional contamination. So government, water utilities, state and local water agencies, public health are, uh, they are all interested in solving this problem, okay. And essentially US EPA was, this, this was funded by NSF, but EPA was heading this effort. Uh, the effort was highly interdisciplinary and essentially it involves uh, contamination propagation and concentration and use of sensors in the network for timely detection of contamination. This is a time dependent problem and consideration of uncertainty is very important and I'll come back to it why it is important. So sensor placement problem, essentially uh, most of the water networks, the drinking water network uh, are modeled in a system called EPA net. It's a black box hydraulic and water quality simulator. Uh, it's a public, it's available in public domain. Essentially, uh, it has models of the network. It models the network as a set of vertices and edges, and essentially have hydraulic simulation capability. Uh, these are uh, nonlinear differential equations, differential algebraic equations, uh, and essentially it's a large scale uh, problem. Uh, it also has a capability of contamination attack modeling, which is like if a release of a large volume of a contaminant at a single point or multiple points in the network can be simulated. And essentially, it tells you how much population is affected and uh, uh, how the contaminant uh, is propagated there. So, one of the things people have used this is a study from Sandia National Lab where they actually uh, solve the sensor placement problem by minimizing population at risk, uh, population affected by contaminated uh, water and essentially they are, are restricting the maximum number of sensors in the network. Again, the cost is a concern. Now in this case, hello, is there a question? Okay. So, Essentially, this formulation doesn't consider uncertainty, but let's look at the formulation. Essentially, what, this is a simple network of eight <coughs> nodes, and what uh, they said is that if you know the population and density delta uh, at different nodes, okay, uh, which are consuming this water, and essentially uh, the nodes also show how the flow is going through the uh, at different nodes and CIJ is a contamination indicator whether the node is affected or not between nodes and I and J and you can have different flow patterns. So for example, the pink lines are showing uh, a flow going from 4 to 5 that may not happen sometimes that may happen. So flow patterns can be different and essentially you also, oh, sorry. And you, you can also have attack probability at each node, okay. So this is 
essentially if you want to minimize the risk to the population the objective function is combination is a multiplication of attack probability into contamination indicator into population density okay and they are subject to the whether the nodes are so the indicators if the sensor is placed before out in the in the at the node you the contamination will not go further that's what is assumed here and it's a mixed integer problem because s uh, variables are integer variable and the number of sensors which is summation of s is uh, given as maximum but we were thinking that this problem formulation is not adequate because they didn't consider any demand uncertainty they didn't consider any changes in the flow so what we said is that if you look at the change in population density which is happens uh, it changes model demand it also changes possibility of more flow pattern okay and not only objective function is affected because of this uncertainty but also constraints are affected by this uncertainty so for example consider this network i show here uh, it essentially has more than it's around 36 nodes and i'm just going to concentrate on one uh, section of this mark in a rectangle of this uh, uh, network and the different colors shows different intensity of flow so if you look at the flow parameter on your left hand side we will see that it shows gallons per minute of water okay so the color change means the flow change if the direction change means pattern change so for example if i just use deterministic demand in that square i get uh, these are the flows okay you have different colors and arrows going different ways but as soon as i change and uh, introduce uncertainty in demand my arrow between 17 and 15 has changed the direction similarly between 22 and 21 it changed the direction uh some of the colors have changed if you look at 16 and 14 the colors have changed so the demand has not only changed direction but it also changes flows and things and this kind of thing is not possible a uh, consideration in their formulation so what we did is we actually changed the formulation and we also introduce uh, uh cost of the sensor in the formulation so here is the formulation which is the first term is the cost term and the second term which concerned the is the risk term okay and we are essentially minimizing uh, the total objective and essential uh, so uh, and here we also introduce the population density and flow pattern change uh, uncertainty uh, using utn8 we could capture it with uh, sampling and essentially you know that utn8 is a non linear black box simulation this is if you look at this problem it's a two stage stochastic problem and two stage stochastic problem means you can have the composition strategy depend based on the stages of the problem okay so second stage uh, the first stage decisions decide more s which is the sensor location and the second stage is the cost the uncertainty part of there uh, it's a propagating that so essentially this problem is uh, solved using l shape method because you could use decomposition strategy so again reiterating what is l shape method we are using decomposition structure from sampling based l shape method a uh, decomposition allows splitting decisions in multiple stages first stage decisions affect the second stage decisions and second stage decisions affect the first stage problem decomposition is computationally more efficient that's why l shape is used and then we use bonus for to reduce computational uh, to increase computational efficiency and for the first time sampling we use homogeneous sample so here we had converted the problem to two stage stochastic nonlinear programming problem with recourse and i'm just going to show a simple network here uh, which has 13 nodes and essentially this this actually has 
uh, and the demand is uh, uncertain here. It results in different basic patterns, which is uh, gross shift and flow pattern. And essentially, total number of flow patterns can be 10. So it, these are discrete flow patterns. Uh, what is happening is with bonus, we could actually capture these changes in flow pattern very easily. And here is some results. If we want to use all low cost sensors, and if I am allowing only three sensors, here is the sensor location. Red, red A are showing deterministic results, and B uh, sensor uh, blue color showing the stock axis result. They are totally different. If you look at it, A3 and B3 are totally at different place. So if you consider uncertainty, you Essentially, your decisions will change most of the time. Okay. So these are the two real-world problems. We have used L-shaped method for to solve other problem. We are going to use it to solve multi-objective sensor problem in some of the power plants, again, black box model. So to summarize, I have pro presented bonus, a novel algorithm for stochastic non-linear programming. It is a derivative-based method. Essentially, we are using H2P uh, 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 based method here. Uh, we use reweighting to avoid sampling at each equation and for derivative calculation. And it is useful for both open equation as well as black box model. And I have presented some weird word applications of significance. Now, uh, the contributors are uh, for this work uh, Kemal Shahin and the uh, developed the original algorithm. He was a postdoc with me. Yogendra was my PhD student who did the L-shaped bonus algorithm as well as the water sensor placement problem. Juan Salazar worked on the water management problem. He was my postdoc. And my student actually who is graduating today, uh, she has her defense today, she wrote this book with me. And as I said, it's going to be out in Springer, uh, by Springer soon. With that, I want to thank you, and I would be open to any questions. Thanks. Great. Well, thank you, Amila. Uh, we're running just a little bit low on time, uh, okay. so we may have uh, time for just one uh, brief I'm sorry, question. I'm sorry. No problem. Uh, excellent presentation. I thought that was uh, very intriguing how you're solving some of these very challenging problems, especially I've heard of stochastic nonlinear programming problems, but throwing um, you know black box models in there as well can be very challenging. So you're doing some great work there. So any um, any quick questions from the audience? And, and feel free to unmute your microphone. Uh, it's a little red button by your name if you'd like to ask a question. Well, I'd like to make a comment. <clears throat> I think this is really impressive. And I know how complicated these problems can be because I worked on the uncertainty analysis for the launch risk analysis for the Cassini uh, mission to Saturn. Wow. And it, that was not an optimization problem, but it was a problem of finding the uncertainty on the risk distribution. And that was bad enough without having to optimize anything. So I think you've done some really nice work here. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you very much. <laughs> if you need the papers and things, just send me email and I can send you the PDF copies of the paper. Okay. Great. Excellent. What I've done is I've put in the chat window the contact information for Amila. And um, so if you'd like to get a hold of her later about a question or about her book or any other thing related to this presentation, feel free. Um, to do that. Um, okay, well, thank you so much, Ramila. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap up now. And uh, like I mentioned, we, we will post this online uh, to YouTube. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining.